<laughs> well, good morning. It's great to be able to be with you. And as I said there, I'm Scott, and, and uh, Shannon is the one that you're probably many in the room are very familiar with because uh, she has been here, and you have been a vital part of supporting her in her ministry over the years. She, she spent a lot of time in Ukraine, and then she's been in campus ministry up in Michigan. Um, but one thing maybe some of you don't know is one of her aunts was a part of the founding members of this church. And so that was just kind of a neat uh, bit of uh, something I've learned since even coming here uh, to be with you. Uh, but also, uh, she really appreciates the, the Frank and Janet Coates, kind of like an extension of their family in your community here. Um, but I just want to give a shout out to yesterday. It was really, I love the format of coming and serving and getting your hands dirty and helping people. And it was just a great uh, opportunity for us to, uh, to meet so many in your, in your church body. And I was, I was really surprised, quite honestly, how many people have some type of uh, connection over in Europe and in, in, even in Poland itself. And so you just never know, honestly, when you walk into a room, the, the, the mix of people and how God has been at work and the things that he's doing. Uh, but this morning, I, I just am thankful for the opportunity to be able to share because I want to, uh, you know, we're here on behalf of Life Venture, and it really is our heart that we want to offer people a uh, new life in Jesus. Uh, there's so many things that try to consume our lives and our time, uh, but when it comes right down to it, it's Jesus who makes the difference, isn't it? You know, and, and so we want to direct people uh, to see him more clearly and to, to, to invite them into a relationship. But part of the way I want to do that is I want to share some personal stories from my, from my own life and from Shannon, how God's been at work calling us into this new ministry, uh, adventure, if you will. Uh, but I, I want to just paint a picture for you. If you were to come over to our home, we currently live in Fort Wayne, Indiana. So if you were to come there, walk up to the loft area, you would see very clearly a picture. And the picture is of an eagle with outstretched wings, and it has this verse from Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31. It says, those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They will, they will um, soar on wings like eagles. And I don't know if you've ever seen just a, a, a bald eagle, you know, sailing through the sky. It's, it's a majestic, beautiful uh, picture. And yet that's also a picture of the way God wants to work in our lives. And this morning, I want to talk, though, and, and really focus in on this whole idea of renewal and how God can renew your life, how he, how he has renewed even my life and, and is making things new. Now, when we think of what the power of God and what he does, I mean, just think with me for a moment to, to all of creation, right? When, when he spoke the whole universe into existence, that was the very first example of him making things from nothing, making things brand new. And yet, when I look around this room and I see every, every one of you, you are also a creation of God. And God has made you, and he wants to continue to, to remake you, if you will, in, in, in beautiful ways. Because, let's be honest, I mean, ever since the fall, with, it began with Adam and Eve, but we've kind of fallen in their footsteps, haven't we, of sinning and experienced the brokenness that sin and, and the havoc it can, re, it can uh, reap in our lives but thankfully, because of what Jesus did on the cross, what we just recently celebrated right a few weeks ago at Easter season, his resurrection, that is a game changer. And it showed that there's nothing that God can't do. No power on this earth or in this universe is greater than what God can do. And so we want to focus in on the way God is still at work, the way he wants to expand his kingdom uh, really all around the globe, so that to, he would touch every single tribe, every single nation. And the, here's one of the things that I've discovered over the years, that he does this for our good, but it's ultimately for his glory. So like I said, I want to just share a few stories, and, and I want to begin uh, by telling you a story of two women of faith. Now, both of these women grew up in homes where their parents taught them about Jesus. One of them was a, uh, an elder's home. Another grew up in a preacher's home. Now, early on, they realized that they wanted to, to, to follow Jesus, and eventually they wanted to, to serve God with their lives. And so they both went off 
and got preparation at, at two different uh, Bible colleges. Then eventually they, they ended up going overseas and serving the Lord um, actually in Russian-speaking countries, though it was two different countries at two different seasons of time. But here's the, maybe the most interesting point of all. Both of them eventually married the same man, but in different times and seasons of life. And in case you're wondering, I am the man that they married. You see, the first woman of faith was my late wife, Carmen. She grew up in Indiana. Like I said, her father was an elder in a church there. We happened to be married for 31 years, and God led us to different parts of the world. We served him in Japan, then in Russia, and we served in several different states, in, out, in, out west in Washington, um, in Indiana most recently, and even in Ohio for a short time. And she was my best friend. She was a faithful companion. She was a servant of others. Uh, she, she was just so kind-hearted, and uh, people loved her for that. And yet, for reasons only the Lord himself knows, she fought and succumbed to cancer at the age of 54. But the good news is, we all know where she is. She is with the Lord right now. She's enjoying her reward, her new heaven in the presence of her Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And she's there now with her folks, who have both gone on as well. And that's all because of the amazing grace of Jesus that they chose to receive in this life. Now, the second woman of faith is known by many of you, and her name has already been mentioned this morning, Shannon Haney. But now she's my lovely wife, Shannon LaRue. We were married uh, a little over a year ago in March 2023. Now, she grew up in Michigan. Her parents uh, were in ministry. Her dad was a preacher. And she's the oldest of three siblings. She went on to graduate from Great Lakes uh, Christian College up in Michigan, and maybe you don't know this, but she actually was previously married right out of college. Um, but despite the hopeful beginning that that had, uh, the, the man that she had chosen to, to marry uh, quickly lost his way. He ended up walking away uh, from his faith and chose to end their marriage just six short years into it. And as you can imagine, that was very crushing to her. It, it broke her heart. And it created some scars and wounds in her life. But as only God can, God has brought renewal in her life as well and made so many things new. In fact, after that uh, season of her life, God renewed her call for missions. She always had a heart for that. And so he led her uh, to go over and serve cross-culturally in Crimea, Ukraine for the better part of 12 years, where she was a part of a whole team with pioneer Bible translators, translating the whole Bible into the Crimean Tatar language. In fact, she demonstrated great courage because she remained in Crimea even after Russia came in and took that over. So she was there uh, for two more years. Then eventually, when she came back, God led her into campus ministry up in Kalamazoo, Michigan, on the campus of Western Michigan University, where she was very instrumental as a part of a team there, discipling international students and introducing them, many of them, for the very first time to Jesus. But now I want to share a little bit about my story. And I pick it up really um, after uh, the passing of my wife Carmen in January 2022, because God has been at work in my life too, renewing, restoring me. Because really after uh, my late wife Carmen passed, it was a real difficult time. And I grieved very, very deeply for those five months. In fact, I experienced just a, 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 a time of brokenness that I've never experienced in my whole life. And maybe it was connected with the fact that a lot of our ministry was still happening in places like Russia and Belarus. But within a month and a half of my wife's passing, Russia invaded Ukraine. And so I saw another part of my life uh, maybe being taken away from me, if you will, realizing we might never get to go back to that place. So it, so it was a challenging season. But in that time, God never left me. God walked with me through all of that. And he reminded me that he still had a plan for my life. He reminded me even of the words of my, my lay wife, Carmen, that she wanted me at some point to remarry 
And not just for my own sake, but for the sake of our, our four kids and, and, and for the sake really of ministry. Because I've been serving the Lord my whole life and I really believe that God still had plans for me that way. But I understood that I'm actually more effective when there's a godly woman by my side. And so after about this five-month period, I, I approached my own kids and I just said, hey, would you pray with me? And I asked some close family and, and other friends, would you pray with me? that God would bring another godly woman into my life who loves Jesus wholeheartedly, who could grow to love me. And that's a big, that's a big ask right there, okay? But who could grow to love me and, and, and learn and grow to love our kids. And here's the amazing thing. God did all of that. In fact, one of uh, my dear friends, her name's Cindy Lund, uh, she and her husband and their family, we served the whole time in Russia together. So she's really like a sister to me. And uh, she took it seriously. She began praying. And within a month after I had made that request, she was praying one morning and God put Shannon's name on her heart. Have you ever had that happen when you're praying? Somebody's name comes to your mind and you're like, what do I need to do with that? Well, she, she, was, she took a bold step. She reached out and actually called Shannon and told her about me and my family and the whole situation there and asked Shan to pray about maybe God would have us meet. And then she called me and said the same thing. And honestly, both Shan and I at first were like, thanks, but we're not sure. You know, we don't know this person, right? But we started praying. And within a month, I, I worked up the courage to ask, hey, can you give me her number? And I texted her. And then within a few short days, we met a couple times. And I kid you not, it was just like, is this even possible? that God could prepare two people that have so much in common, not just experientially, but our hearts were, were quickly open to one another. And we, we saw that maybe God had something in mind for us. And so I'm one of those people, I need God to be that obvious to me. You know, I can miss the obvious sometimes, but this was really obvious. And so within three weeks, I proposed and asked if she would, yeah, I know. See, isn't that a, crazy, right? I, I, I said it was crazy beautiful, everything that was happening there. And seven months later, we were married on March 25th, 2023. And ever since then, we've been blending our lives and the lives of our families and kids. And see, here's the thing. We both have a shared love for Russian-speaking people. And so even in those first days when we met, we were wondering, does God have something in store for us? Does God, does God have something else in mind? And so this is where her story and my story becomes our story. See, this past summer, as you saw briefly in the video, she and I, uh, along with Anya, who is my oldest daughter, but you're going to hear me call them our kids now because they, they're becoming our kids, right? So our daughter, Anya, who's the oldest, and then Ben, who's 14, he's actually back in the kids area talking to the kids this morning. So uh, the four of us went overseas. We went to Poland to see what God was doing there. Because as uh, the video showed, there's a, a couple called Yvonne and Maria. They're, they're a wonderful, beautiful Christian couple uh, from Minsk, Belarus. And uh, they just have a heart uh, for the Lord, heart for kids. And uh, they were displaced. They were living in Minsk, and there was political upheaval there. If you've heard some of the news over the last several years, a lot of people have left there as well. And many of them have, have arrived in Poland, and they were among those people. And so back in, in 2021, actually while my wife was battling cancer, you know, uh, they moved there, and, and we helped them to make some connections. But it was really providential that they arrived at that season because it was about a six-month window of time that they had to be able to adjust there. But then the war began in Ukraine. And literally millions of people started flooding into the country. And uh, they were a part of the Pawaskai Christian Church um, there in Warsaw, which just so happens to be a block and a half from the Ukrainian consulate. And so people would be lined up on the sidewalks, wrapping around by the church. So the church is like, we got to do something here. And so they began offering meals and, and providing photocopy of service because everybody had to get copies of documents. They did like 100,000 copies in a few months. You know, it's crazy numbers, right? But they were wanting to serve and love on these people. Later that fall, our, our mission uh, came uh, to, into a partnership with the church there to literally free up Yvonne and Maria to focus full time on serving and reaching out to the Ukrainians and the Belarusians. 
And I, I can't help but think, even though there was a lot of heartache, a lot of hardship going on here, that God can take something that seems to be a disaster, right? And use it for good and use it for his glory. And, and he was doing that in their lives. And that's the way God works though, isn't it? See, God wants to renew us. And then he invites us to join him on mission. See, sometimes we, we miss that second part, right? We want to be renewed. We want to be filled up again. But God doesn't just do it for our own good, friends. He does it ultimately for his glory because he wants to use us and send us back out. And so that's what we've been seeing in our story, right? Um, it really became clear to us last summer when we went to Poland and we saw all of these needs uh, right before us. And so with our kids, we were just talking about uh, all the conversations we were having with people there. And we were saying, what do you hear God saying? What's, what's maybe God leading us to consider? And so we had this con ongoing conversation throughout our time there. We came back to the States and Shan and I took, uh, set aside three days just to pray intensely about this because we were wondering, God, do you want us to maybe step into this directly and be more directly involved in what you're doing there? Uh, but we walked away from that, those three days, not with a lot of clarity, but we had burden. We had a burden for this. And, and so we're not sure what to do with this, right? And so we just kind of set it aside and, okay, we'll continue to, to pray about that, but, but we don't feel like we have clarity to move forward with confidence. But about a month later, Shan and I, um, one of the commitments we made as a new couple was we wanted to have a day a month where we would get to get away together for prayer that we would spend time individually praying and then come together and say, what is God, you know, prompting you? What's he putting on your heart? And so we did that for the very first time, the end of August. And uh, uh, we didn't have an agenda. We didn't have a plan, honestly. We just kind of set aside this time. We went into a park, had a nice spot, a couple benches by a creek, very quiet. And I'm just like, okay, God, what do you want to do? And uh, the first thing that came to my mind was that verse out of Psalms where it says, be still and know I'm God. Now, a beautiful verse, and, and I'm thinking, yeah, I'm, going to, I'm just going to read that whole psalm. So I turned to Psalm 42 to read that, right? Uh, I, it wasn't there. I don't know where it went, but it wasn't in that psalm. And so I just started to read, though, and here was the very first verse of Psalm 42. As the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. And that really expressed my heart at that moment that, yeah, God, I want more of you. I need more of you. And, and I read through that, and it, it, it took me then, it, you know, God kind of puts a thought in your mind uh, about Isaiah. You know, that verse we read at the beginning, and I read the whole chapter of Isaiah 40, and a couple other ver uh, verses tied in with that verse that we read at the beginning. It says, even though youths grow tired and weary and young men stumble and fall, but those who hope in the Lord will renew their strength. They'll soar on wings like eagles. They will run and not grow weary. They will walk and not be faint. And friends, that described me. I deeply wanted that from the Lord, that he would allow me to soar again in a, in a sense, right? And to experience his power at work in me. And so Shan and I came back together and I shared all those things with her and she is getting ready to share. But just as we're, we're sitting on the bench together and the streams right in front of us, off here to the left, all of a sudden, these three deer start walking across the creek. I had never seen that in my life. I mean, I've seen deer, but not walking across a stream. And there were these two adult and a fawn. And you know what it made me think of immediately? That's our family right now. That's like me and Shannon and, and Ben. As if God, God was just comforting us in, in, in a way, just saying, you know, I see you guys. I know the longings of your hearts, and I'm going to be with you. So we just enjoyed that, that moment. And then uh, Shannon went on and she started sharing some of the things God had put on her, her heart. And it was just amazing. She, she had this uh, verse, a couple of verses from Psalm 103. And at the beginning, it just talks about praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then it starts naming some of them. And she had written down this one, who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like what? Like the eagles. Huh. Two totally separate passages, but it's the same theme, right? Being renewed like an eagle. 
Then she went on to read through the whole book of Colossians, but she, she kind of centered in on a, a verse out of Colossians 3.10, where it, talks, it speaks of putting on the new self, which is being renewed in, in knowledge in the image of its creator. Renewal. God was doing this in both of us separately, but he was sending the same message. And as she was talking, it's just like my eyes lit up. And she looks at me and she says, what? And I said, well, what's the name of our venture in Poland? Because we always give our, the, the people we're partnering with a name just to recognize. You know what the name of our venture in Poland is? Renew. And it was at that moment, it was just as if our eyes opened in a, in a fresh way. It was like the confirmation that we needed as a couple. That God indeed was calling us, actually, to go and join what he was already doing there and be a part of this renewed venture in Poland. And it's like this weight. You ever have these weights that you carry and it just, the weight fell off and our hearts were just filled with peace and we experienced some renewal in those moments. And so later we went and shared. Uh, the first people we actually shared with were, were Ben and Anya. And if you have a chance to meet Ben, uh, you'll see he's kind of cool, calm, collected. He's not real expressive, but he, he gets excited about some things. And when we told him, he jumped up from the couch and started running around the whole room. And we're like, whoa, what's going on here? But he was excited. He was enthusiastic. And honestly, that was a, a, another confirmation because he's going to go through a world of changes here in the coming months. But he, he, he sees that, that God wants us to go. And our other kids, our parents, they were very affirming. And in fact, I called and talked to Yvonne, and he was excited. And then I talked to the preacher of that church where they're working. And he listened, and he says, man, that's, that's wonderful to hear. And he says, but one thing that's really been interesting to me, over the last month, he lives just kind of in a suburb area of Warsaw, where we're going to go. And he says, over this last month, these three deer have been showing up at my fence line. I haven't understood what that's about. Yeah, yeah. Isn't God in the business of confirming some things in, in very simple, gentle ways? And see, friends, this is just our story. But here's what I want you to know. God is writing a story through each of our lives. And God wants his story to be interwoven in each of our stories so that he can work for our good and for his glory See, he wants to redeem you and I and all of us from sin, shame, and selfish living, to be made new, to be renewed, to be on mission for him and with him. I love the verses from Ephesians chapter 2 where it says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God, right? Salvation, it's not a reward for the good things that we have done. So none of us can, can boast about it. But here's the verse. For we are God's masterpiece. He has created us, how? Anew, in Christ Jesus. So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. So we're saved by grace, right? It's a, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a gift. It's priceless. It's free. But it's not because you or I are good enough because we're smart enough or deserving enough. But it's all because Jesus is enough. His death, burial, and resurrection paid our price, overcame sin and death, and he sealed the deal for our redemption. And see, God is still at work, though. He is still at work. He is at work in every single one of our lives. If we'll just take the time to look and, and notice and what he's doing in you, what he wants to do in me, is he's making a work of art, a unique masterpiece, if you will, that he wants to show the world so that, not that people look at us and think, wow, that's amazing. No, no, no. That they look at us and say, I don't know how that happened, but there's got to be something behind that. And that something is God. And he does all that, not just to guarantee our salvation, not just to give us a wonderful place in eternity with him in heaven. But what did it say? So we can do the good things he planned for us long ago. And see, friends, that is good news. Don't you think? That is good news for every single one of us in this room. But, but really for every person on the planet, they need that message that God is at work. 
that there is no sin that is too horrible that he can't forgive. There is no past too broken that he can't renew it. That there is no suffering too painful that he can't bring healing. And there is no future too frightening that he can't make a way. And so I don't know where you are this morning in your story. I don't know exactly what God is doing today in your life. But can I invite you? Maybe can I even just challenge you a little bit? Embrace all that God has already done. Embrace it all. Embrace all that God is currently doing in your life. But here's the real challenge. Embrace all that he wants to do in the days ahead, in you and through you. But then along with that, be willing to take a step of faith. It's trust. You got to be willing to trust him. Be willing to trust him and seek to listen to his voice. How is he speaking to you through his word, through the circumstances around you, through your own struggles, right? God is speaking through that. And then follow him wherever it leads. For us, it's leading us to sell our home, move across the world. Maybe he's just wanting you to go across the street. Wherever he leads you, though, follow him. Because when you and I, when we hope in the Lord, he'll renew our strength. And yes, we can mount up with wings like eagles. Will you pray with me? So, Father, we just thank you. We thank you that you are a God who is so powerful that there is nothing too big for you, that you can't work through it, that you can't help us overcome it, that you want to defeat uh, the things that hold us back. And you want to free us up, really, to walk and run and even soar with you because you are making a masterpiece in our lives, not not for our own glory, not just so that we can um, relax or or even revel in the goodness of all of that. Those are benefits, but that's not the purpose. Because you want to work in and through every single one of us to reach the people around us who still don't know that you are a good God, that you are a loving Father, that you are... ...as a church to continue to build into their life and their ministry and to follow you along, follow along in your journey as you guys go to Poland and just the, the great things that we know God will continue to do for you. So thank you so much for sharing that. I want to also invite Jaden Seaman up. Uh, Jaden Seaman is uh, from our church here. Some of you guys maybe uh, helped him in the nursery when he was young. I don't know. Um, But I thought it was a neat opportunity because Jaden here uh, recently went on a short-term mission trip. And so now that he's back, I mean, that was just like a few weeks ago, right? Yeah. Um, So just a neat opportunity since it is missions weekend. Uh, he's, he, you reached out to my wife, uh, who leads the missions team and you're like, Hey, I could come and share to the missions team. And I was like, Hey, let's share with the whole church. Uh, so that's what he wants to do this morning a little bit, talk a little bit about short term mission trip, which is a little di- different than what Scott and Shannon are doing as far as long term. But tell us a little bit about your trip and what it all entailed. Yeah, of course. Um, yeah. So I offered to speak to the missions team and get a little bit um, no, I'm just kidding. Uh, happy to have this opportunity. And before I start, I want to say thank you. Um, I know a lot of you knew about the trip and were praying for us, for our safety, and um, you know that we would be able to accomplish what God had for us. So thank you um, for those of you that were praying. Um, so what we did was it was through an organization called CMDA, Christian Medical and Dental Association. Um, a few doctors put a trip together to the Dominican Republic because they, uh, they have a heart for the Haitian people that live there because they face a lot of discrimination and, and that sort of thing. Um, so we traveled out into the southwest of the Dominican Republic to provide medical care to people living in um, these plantation-type communities called bates that uh, don't get much support from the Dominican government. Um, and so we, yeah, we traveled out there to provide some health care and sort of primary care clinics for them. Yeah. But on your way out there, you had some travel difficulties. Uh, Yeah, that would be putting it mildly. (laughs) Um, So we were flying from Charlotte to Miami to Santo Domingo, and that was the plan. It was going to happen on Saturday. It was great. Um, And as we were going, there was some weather over Miami, so we got diverted to West Palm Beach. 
Um, and we were there for a couple hours before we finally get to Miami. And, you know, we thought we might miss our flight to Santo Domingo, but it had also been delayed. So, you know, we're like, all right, we're, we're going to make it there just a few hours late. And then all of a sudden we find out that our flight to Santo Domingo is canceled because um, they, they couldn't find a pilot or something. You know, I'm not American Airlines, I don't know. <laughs> um, but uh, they, they couldn't find a pilot, and so they're like, okay, we'll just stay the night in Miami, and they'll rebook us on a flight tomorrow. And it turned out that there were no flights on Sunday, um, and there were also no hotels in the city of Miami because there was <laughs> a music festival going on called Ultra, if anyone's familiar, but there was not a single hotel within two hours of the airport um. that we could stay at. Um, and so, you know, Dr. Bruggen, one of the leaders of the trip, came up to us and he's like, hey guys, like, I don't know that we're going to be able to go. Like, we might just have to go back. Um, and so at that moment, uh, you know, morale was a bit low. Um, but we stopped and prayed and, you know, just asked God that, you know, like, can you please just get us there? Like, that's, that's what we want to do. Um, and I know, again, many of you were praying at that point, and um, the missions team here at Norm was generous enough to say, you know, we'll help with, you know, whatever you need. Um, and we were able to find that night, uh, through a church connection of somebody on the trip, an office building to stay in. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, and it was the nicest office building I've ever been in. <laughs> uh, um, but yeah, so we finally, we got rebooked, and we flew out Monday. You know, uh, God was gracious enough to, uh, you know, even though the plan changed, we still were able to get there. So it's a trip organized by some doctors as a medical mission. Tell us a little bit about what you did on the trip once you got to the Dominican. Yeah, so once we got to the Dominican, we traveled out to a city in the southwest called Barahona. Um, I'm sorry, I, I butcher that. I don't speak Spanish. Um, but from there, we, went, we would then take a truck out every day about 45 minutes to an hour and a half, depending on, you know, which bate we were going to. And we would set up shop in these little towns, in the church in the town, and we would... Um, we'd have a little triage area for patients to come in. People from the town would come in and they would say, you know, just, you know, briefly, like, what, what's ailing them? And then we would get some vital signs. And then um, the doctors and us medical students would be kind of set up just behind that. And they would come to us then after triage. And, you know, we would, you know, do a physical exam, take a history through an interpreter, of course, um, and try to, you know, treat them as best we could. Um, and then we had a pharmacy in the back with medicines that we had brought to, to, you know, we treated, you know, bacterial infections, parasites, you know, all, the, all those sorts of things, you know, blood pressure medications, um, and just trying to, you know, love on people and, you know, provide them with medication that we take for granted here in the yeah. States that can, you know, make their life a lot easier. So what's your encouragement? I mean, we heard from Scott already some of of how God wants to use our story and where we are. We don't have to be special in any sense of that word. What's your encouragement to some as maybe it's their first time hearing about mission things? Maybe they've felt a call to explore missions a little bit. We go on a trip every year. Uh, was this your first experience on a mission trip? And what kind of, what, what's your encouragement to other people uh, that might be feeling some of that tug in their life by God? Yeah, um, so there's a few things that I would say. I mean, th this was my first, uh, you know, mission trip experience, uh, and it was amazing. Um, but the the first thing I would say is that, you know, mission trips are uh, uh, almost as much for your faith as they are for mm. the people you're serving. Um, it, that was huge for me. I, I'll quickly share just a patient encounter I had. Um, in one of the bates we went to, there was a young man who had been shot four or five years ago, and he was paralyzed from the waist down. Um, and he had been transported to the capital, got surgery, uh, but then he was, you know, just brought straight back to, to his home. Um, and he had developed really bad pressure sores that you can get when you're not well cared for after surgery. Um, and these same doctors that took us on the trip were there last year, and they cared for him and his pressure sores last year. Um, and they taught people in the village, you know, how to, you know, rotate him, take care of him, all that sort of stuff. And just to see the difference between, like, that just, you know, educating people had made in his life. Um, and we went back to his, his house because he couldn't come into the clinic and, you know, changed his dressings and that sort of stuff. And he stopped us, and he praised God for us being there, and then he asked to read... Psalm 23 with us, um, cool. and, you know, he read it in Spanish, too, which you couldn't always follow along, but, but um, you know, I got the gist of it, and that was just an incredibly powerful experience for me um, to see, 
you know, this, this man has almost nothing, um, and yet he loves God with his whole heart. Uh, and so that, that made a big impact on me. Um, so that's, that's the first lesson I would say is, you know, they also can be very refreshing and renewing for your faith. Um, but then second, um, something that I wrestled with on the trip and I think, you know, can be a struggle of short-term missions is sometimes you feel like you're not necessarily making the difference that you want to. Um, you know, particularly in our case, it was like, I'm giving people medications that, you know, will run out eventually, right? And some of these problems we're not going to be able to cure. Um, but, uh, you know, a passage in scripture that kind of helped me with that was in 1 Corinthians 3, Paul's talking a little bit about evangelism and how he started the Corinthian church. And he says, you know, I planted the seed, Apollos watered it, but God makes it grow. Um, and so just, you know, with short-term missions, understanding that, you might be the one planting the seed and you might never see it grow. Um, but to simply be there, to have a willing heart to do the work that God wants done, um, you know, is, is the biggest thing and God will make grow what he's going to make grow. And so just having a willing heart to, to be a part of that, I, th I think is huge. Very cool. Well, I'm going to invite the band to come on up. Uh, Jaden, come over here by me. I feel like we've been so far apart this whole time. I'm going to pray for Jaden, but I want to pray for all of us. Uh, we're going to sing a song called Send Me. And it's a reminder that uh, we may not know God's plans. In fact, we won't because God's thoughts are bigger than our thoughts and his understanding is greater than our understanding. And so in the midst of when it seems like things are over for whatever reason, Scott shared his testimony about his wife passing away from cancer and Jaden's uh, with the, the airlines and everything. It just seemed like it wasn't going to work out. Um, I was reminded actually by someone this weekend as we were doing food packing, God hasn't brought you this far to give up on you. Um, God hasn't done one work in your life, and then he says, okay, that's all I'm going to give you. God continues to be with us and to bring us through these things. Uh, even when we don't see a way out, God knows it uh, for our good and his glory. And so I want to pray for Jaden. I want to pray for us as, as our hearts be open to what God may be working in our heart before we even know it. So let's pray. Dear God, I thank you so much for uh, 